Everybody, Steve DiGiorgio, bass player of Testament here. You're watching Impact Channel. Ah. Guys, we are here with Steve DiGiorgio again. Hey, nice hey, to good to see you again. Good to see you again too. Yeah. So, how is the tour with Annihilator and Death Angel? Ah, it's been going excellent. Uh, really strong packages. You know, mm -hmm. all three bands have been doing this 30, 35 years or something. So, mm -hmm. there's a good history. But to see that all the shows have been selling out is not only, you know, really appreciated by the bands, but it's great to see that the scene is alive. That, mm -hmm. you know, that we can do what we like to do, but it's crazy. That, you know, after so long, it's just a very strong metal scene going on. So we're enjoying it while it lasts. We know it won't be forever, but for now, it's great. You recently turned 50 years old. How did you celebrate your birthday? Um, yeah, I don't know how to not be so depressing. Actually, my mom was in the hospital. Um, fast forward, she's doing really good now. So um, it was kind of a... At, when they... When they brought her into the room to do her procedure, I just told her, Mom, give me a good birthday present. You know, make this come out all right. She came out killer. So it was a little bit, uh, yeah, it's a weird way to, you know, answer. But that's the truth. I, I spent a lot of days, including my birthday, sitting next to Mom in the hospital. But, but that's why I said, like, you know, I was able to travel to Europe and feel confident being away for so long because she's doing pretty well. So that's the point. That's a good present for me to keep mom nice and strong. So, and how would you summarize your career? Summarize my career? Oof. You gotta let me study that one, man. I don't know. That's hard to say. I don't know. I, I've been one to try to keep busy on all levels. You know, I don't. I never set any kind of standard to where I limited myself. You know, I still record with young musicians, I still record with bands that are doing their first album, which means they're unknown, obviously, if they're starting. I still record with musicians that are doing side projects from their main bands, and once in a while I get lucky and get to do high profile session work. So to summarize my career, I think I'm all over the map. You know, as a bass player in all kinds of different metal and sometimes a little outside of metal if I can get lucky but yeah I just try to be uh, I don't know as global is that a good definition <laughs> universal universal yeah go to the space theme again <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's a, that's a that's not an easy answer sorry I guess so. summarize your career well wow. the last time I tried to get more to the Nor your Norwegian heritage and talk about it uh, does it feel like a pilgrimage when you go to Scandinavia and Norway in general? <laughs> yeah, in a way, because my great-grandparents left there, so the stories and, and the, the attachment is still pretty fresh. But I have to kind of enjoy it in semi-privacy or to the rare few that really give a shit, because the people that are there um, their families never left. I realized that a lot of people in, um, I guess I could say Europe, but in my experience having family in, in Norway, a lot of those people don't really get so excited about their heritage or their history so much, I think because it just it was always there. And for, for people in USA and Canada maybe, there's a search for identity because almost everybody has a past that's not there you know and so it's just Europeans are just gonna have to get used to Americans searching out their history it's what we like to do the whole DNA test thing is very popular mm -hmm. and you know the culture the whole heritage of, of the Norse and the Vikings and, and all that stuff it's a very attractive thing and it's it seems to have a big resurgence over the past few years with all the shows and movies coming out about it so, you know, maybe the people there think it's kind of their own thing, or maybe they push it back. You know, there are some people that are, uh, I don't want to say embarrassed, but they, they don't really embrace it so much. But we're coming. 
-hmm. anyway, you know, um, because it is part of our past. We have family members that that came from there and left for a reason, and so it's interesting to us, mm -hmm. you know. So it's 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 weird. I, I thought I would go there and, and find this you know magical wonderland, but it's a country existing in the modern world, just like anything else. So you have to really kind of search it out. Which fortunately, I do have some friends that are interested and do help me out. And I've gone to different Viking markets and different historical sites, and so fortunately, I have you know. Musical projects that first of all get me in there, and then I make the friends, and then then we could branch out in free time and go see stuff. So uh, I'm getting my uh, getting my fingers back into the old motherland. <laughs> you mentioned last time that you like to watch the night sky with your telescope. Have you ever had the chance to see the aurora borealis? No, I've never seen the, the aurora in person. That's you know when people have these lists to do before they die. I, I have to. I have to see that. Um, yeah, Iceland's a pretty, pretty easy place to go see that in northern Norway. But we also have Alaska over on the west coast, mm -hmm. so I, I need to, I need to get that one checked off and experience that. I've never, I've never seen. I seen a piece of one from a plane window, but it was so far away. It just, I don't know. I don't count it. <laughs> How much are you into the uh, Norse mythology? How much am I into it? Um, Is it just an interest, or you pretty much all the way? I mean, I've I've been interested since I was a kid because you know my my grandpa, uh, my Norwegian grandfather, he he knew that stuff, mm -hmm. and, and he would he would tell it for fun, though, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but for my my brother and sister and some of my cousins, that stuff was just stories of these fantasy things but I don't know I, I identified with it for some reason it, it really just stuck especially hearing it from him he had a really big voice a giant long beard and, and it's just funny too because he suffered from glaucoma so he, he was missing an eye mm. and I never thought it until after he passed away I was like my grandpa had one eye and a long beard was a great storyteller and I'm like hmm <laughs> <laughs> Kind of a little, you know, Odin type figure in the family. So, um, but Grandma was very Christian, and she made everybody dress up and go to church on Sunday. And I was a little nasty kid. I hated it, and I, I just acted like a freaking asshole. And eventually, it was easier for them to leave me at home with Grandpa. Like, oh, he's good. You'll see. You're gonna. He's gonna put you to work. <laughs> and so they all drive off to church, and I'd sit there all scared. What's he gonna do? What's he gonna do? And he. He would just say, you want to read something? You want to, what do you want to do? And he would start telling the stories. And I was like, Grandpa's cool, man. Mm -hmm. And I'd always ask him, how come you don't go? And he goes, well, you know, we all believe what we want to believe. And so I, I always kept that with me. Do you watch the uh, TV series called Vikings? Of course. How do you like it? Yeah, it's well done. You know, uh, I don't know if it's going to be your next question or your curiosity. Of course, the historical things are kind of, inaccurate, yeah. jumbled, you know, names from 400 years apart are friends in the show and all yeah. that kind of stuff, but, eh, you know, and it's like the, it's like all of a sudden there's a million experts and purists that hate the Marvel movies too, mm -hmm. you know, oh, Thor and Loki aren't brothers, everyone knows Loki is Odin's blood brother, hey, you know what, that comic book's been around since the 60s, and no one bitched about it then, it's just this weird and that's what religion does to people. It, it just makes you so opinionated in, in their own righteousness. It's, I don't care. As long as it's well done, it's fun. It brings attention to it, and it makes people aware of it. And whatever it can do to assist people in their own uh, search or personal path, whatever, that's fine. All right. Well, we need to stop, unfortunately. So Already? To be continued. Yeah. Thank you again for your time. And have a nice time. All right. Sorry it's so short, man. But I guess it's the time we're allowed. Unfortunately. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for having me back again.